All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Chalenza. Thanks for checking out the Rich Chalenza Show. So what I'm going to call this podcast is Buy the Lady a Drink and Shut Up. So I don't know if you know anything about who I am, but uh, I have a program I'll call Mastering Self-Confidence. And it's to help men find the woman or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. I don't do a ton of podcasts uh, on that I guess you could say that program, but I do want to bring it up this time because I've been working with a lot of young guys again. Uh, Some interns, some other young guys I've been having meetings with, some marketing guys, even online phone calls. And I don't know what it is, but my program seems to gravitate with them more than anyone else. Even my YouTube channel, my podcast, my age demographic really is like 18 to 35. Uh, but what we, I had a lunch not too long ago with a couple of them, and they were kind of fascinated by me growing up in the nightclub business in the 70s and you know through the 80s and then ending up in the bar industry. And the excitement of all that, <clears throat> excuse me, I get it. But we were kind of talking about how a lot of uh, the younger guys, they either, you know, they do drugs, could be weed, or they drink. Uh, or other things as well. We don't have to list everything and how they kind of get really screwed up before going out or while they're out, they're kind of messed up. And kind of how things are just entirely different now when it comes to meeting women, not only through you know Tinder or through social media, but things are just kind of, I think to a certain degree, getting maybe a little crazy out there. It's maybe simpler on one end, but more complicated, I guess you could say, on another end. Because it may be saturated and a lot of these younger guys I talk to, I think it's a trust thing. I think they don't trust a lot of women. As as much access they have to women, obviously women have to men. And anyways, that's what I've been hearing. So what was kind of funny is we were talking about, he's like, you know, a lot of young guys, they kind of, you know, they're good on messaging each other, even texting, emailing, whatever. But they're not really huge on the phone when it comes to, you know, maybe talking to women until they maybe get in a relationship and they're not really savvy kind of when they're out and they even talk about that. They see women when they're out and they kind of get paralyzed a little bit. They don't know what to do. And a lot of times, like I said, either they're half in the bag or they want to catch a buzz so they knock off the edge where they can kind of be fluent and they're not scared to talk to women if they're shy or introverted. Uh, yeah. So what I want to kind of get into the, with this podcast and the reason I bring up you know, shut up and buy the lady a drink. And first off, I want to say that does not mean you have to buy every woman you see a drink or every woman you're interested in a drink or buy groups of women. I talk about that in my book, Wingman, and my program. Last thing I ever want you to do is waste your money. But I do think what happens with a lot of men is, and this could be when you're out with your buddies or by yourself, and you do see a woman or a group of women or whatever that you're interested in talking to. And what I think happens is one of two things. I think a lot of times a guy will buy a woman a drink or women drinks. And then once they buy the drinks, they start hitting on them profusely. Is that the word? Or nonstop, I guess you could say. They become annoying. They almost think because they purchased a drink, this woman has to listen to your bullshit. Right? They don't. The other thing is too, how do I word this? Is they kind of um, buy the drink, right? They're not necessarily hitting on them, but they are just kind of, talking to them. But the way they're talking to them is almost like, I can't say hitting on them, but they're just, it sounds stupid. They're asking them where they're from, common, like common boring questions. Where, you know, where they're from, what are they doing there? Where do you, you know, where do you go to school? What do you do for a living? All the stupid shit that most women don't want to hear. I'm here to tell you though, let's just put it this way. And I'm not telling you to be boring. I'm not telling you to you know, any of these things, your best bet when meeting a woman, I think in a bar or nightclub, I don't care if it's a Starbucks and you buy them a drink. I'm just using a drink for an example. Is buying them the drink, saying nice meeting you and calling it a day or just saying something very small. Like, you know, I think, you know, if you're familiar with fashion, you may be like, Hey, I love that perch. What is or that purse? Is that a Tory Burch? Or I love your shoes. What are those Louboutins? Whatever the case may be, something brief. They're going to answer maybe, most likely, especially if you brought them a drink, and then call it a day. That doesn't mean turn your back on them, but just be calm. Sit back. A lot of times, just starting a conversation is the way to go. And buying the drink is actually kind of a starter. 
you saying something as a follow-up. Then sit back and relax and see how it goes. Most men do not know how to do this. They flake. Like I said before, they start spewing out either all this stupid shit telling them how beautiful they are or like I said, hitting on them originally or like I also said, starting up just dumb conversations that are just very generic. First of all, listen, if you buy someone a drink, a woman a drink, just be yourself. Now, if you're an asshole, you're an asshole. There's no getting around it. If you're introverted, I get you're introverted. But I do think one of the things, especially in bars and nightclubs, what happens to people when they go out is they're not themselves. They're not at all. Now, I'm not saying we're always going to be ourselves. If you're, you know, you may be louder when you're out, you're funner and this and that. And obviously, you're not going to be that at home or when you're with your family members or friends. We all have different, I think, traits when we're in different, you know, situations. But I do think the more you can kind of settle in and be yourself, the better off you're going to be, especially when meeting women. And I'm using this buying the drink premise. It works on other levels as well. Just chill out. Learn to listen a little more at the beginning when you're interested in a woman. Because a lot of times you may sit there and start a discussion and she's talking and you're like, wow, this girl's nuts. But you never knew that because you never shut up. So you met her, never shut up, maybe got her number, took her out on a date, and then you found out she was nuts. Or she may say things that, you know, that have, things that you're totally not interested in uh, or being around, right? That could be too. You don't even know that. Or you may find her very interesting. But if you're the one who's always talking, or you're the one who's always kind of like you know, pushing certain things or certain questions, the same old bullshit, you're not going to get a lot out of that, I think, a lot of times. Now, I'm not saying that to change your whole identity when it comes to buying a drink. And you got your own angle or meeting women in a bar, meeting them in a club, meeting them in a restaurant. I don't care what it is. But I'm just here to tell you a lot of times basically what I'm saying is just shutting up. The less sometimes you say at the beginning, the better off you're going to be. No matter what, if you end up a, on a date or in a relationship, there's going to be enough time to talk. But a lot of times when you do randomly meet a woman one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting, it's kind of quick. It's off the cuff. You only sometimes have one chance. And I'm telling you, the less you say a lot of times, the better off you're going to be at the beginning. You're also not going to put your foot in your mouth. All right? And here's the thing I am going to wrap this up with. Let me get some water here. And I used to talk, talk this, and we were just discussing this with my uh, buddies and a group of us. We were all having cigars. Uh, and uh, there were, our girlfriends were there and everything. And I used to call a lot of my friends shit, shit in the pants, the crew, the crew. I used to call them the shit in the pants. Because when they would go out, they would always have to drink, like I said earlier a little bit. And they would have to you know, catch a buzz. And then all of a sudden, they were the life of the party. And then they're all this and that. And then when they would meet these girls, they were fun. They dance, whatever, or whatever the case would be. Then when they would date them, I would see it go sour. Because once they sobered up, which is 99% of the time, they were sober. They weren't buzzed. They weren't that person. Again. So I used to call them the shit in the pants. And I even used to tell them, listen, and, and don't get me wrong. We all used to drink sometimes. But I'd be like, wait, don't get, just learn how to talk to these women. Just sober. I know it's hard, especially if you're nervous and you're not used to that you know, that environment. I grew up in a bar nightclub environment. So everybody used to kind of be like, you just say whatever you want to, whoever you want to say it to and blah, blah, blah. And believe me, I'm not saying I wasn't intimidated by beautiful women a lot of times, but it would be like if you were born and raised in say the entertainment industry and you're always around celebrities, your parents were writers or directors or whatever producers, you would be comfortable going to red carpet events and going on sets and shoots and all that, right? Where if you took somebody who's never been there, they're going to shit in the pants a little bit right? Same kind of situation. But I'm just telling you, even if you just go to your local coffee house at the beginning, okay? Uh, it doesn't even have to be a bar a lot of times. You're interested. I don't care if you're interested in the barista. I don't care if you're just sitting next to a girl and you're, you're interested in her and saying, hey, would you watch my computer? I'm going to go to the restroom and come back and offer her a coffee uh, or just starting a simple conversation. Sober. Start it. Make it interesting at the beginning and sit back and see how it develops take your time. Okay. I'm just telling you that. And a lot of times too, at the beginning, sometimes this is something too. I realize they talk too much for too long of a period of time. So you meet somebody you're interested in. She seems interested. You're like, Hey, connect with me. And I don't care what social media platform. If you want to give your number out, you could do that. I wouldn't recommend it. You can do that and later kind of catch up and talk more. So I just wanted to kind of do a podcast on this because we've been going through this a lot with questions with especially the younger guys because they're like, we don't communicate like that. We want to, I think 
I may be wrong, but I think a lot of younger people that I'm around now kind of like the old days more than they say. I think they like a lot of older music, and I, I think they like how a lot of things were maybe simpler and not, again, so cluttered on social media where everybody knows your business or everybody's just kind of hooking up to hook up. Uh, I think a lot of guys, at least the younger guys that I'm running into, they want to be in relationships uh, or they want to be around you know, people that are interested in your women and it's kind of sloppy right now, according to them. It's very messy, and I can see that. I could definitely see that kind of getting a little bit out of control where there's not a, I can't say loyalty aspect, but there is kind of the mindset where, <clears throat> excuse me, if it doesn't work out with you, it's very easy to move on on both ends. So anyways, if you want to check out my program, it's masteringselfconfidence.com. Uh, I'm Rich Talenza, so you obviously know that listening to this. But if you go to richtalenza.com, uh, you're going to see uh, everything that I do. But if you have any questions or comments, hit me up. If you disagree, you know, hit me up with that too. I love any any feedback whatsoever. Believe me, what I say doesn't necessarily always going to work for everyone. It just kind of worked from what I saw, not just for me, but just me trying to help other people or seeing what has worked and not worked throughout my entire life when it comes to meeting uh, women, especially in the bar, nightclub. It could even be gentlemen's club. But here's, I will wrap it up with this. Don't be... You're going to a gentleman's club. Do not be buying bottles for the stripper unless you want to piss your money away. If you want to do that, you're more than welcome to it. Do not get conned buying too many drinks at a strip club or gentleman's club, especially buying bottles. Again, if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to it if you can't afford it, but I would not recommend doing that. Most likely, she is going to play you. And if you do want to meet those type of women, you're going to meet them outside of the club, not inside it. All right, we could get into a whole thing with that. I have that on my program, but all right, take care and I wish you nothing but the best.